last chapter we go for the last last one we go for the starting point how it works how the department inside each of the company for this chapter is about the decision making okay so for the decision making as you think about the decision when you want to make decision what are the factors that you need to take in order to make decision what are the things that you need in order to make decision data of course data so in business how can you take or how can you retrieve the data uh, surveys and reports uh -huh, survey and report. So what are the things that you can get the data uh, out of the survey and the report? Sample size? Mm, sample size is to estimate the number of the survey and the report that you want to retrieve for. But in order to make decisions, for example, you are the CEO of the company and then you want some data how can you find the data if you send just the questionnaires you may get some part of the data if in that case if you are the ceo of 711 how can you take the data from you would have to go through the departments mm -hmm. you have to go to the departments and where the department takes the data from from operations yes they get from the operation they get from the point of sale or the cashier how can they get it they use computer in order to retrieve those data and send through the system so in order to make decision you might need a big amount of data in order to do the morning class that is descriptive statistic in order to estimate mean median mode and also standard deviation in order to focus for the future sales of the products for the small scale you can go and observe by yourself you can count by using your pen and pencil but in order to increase the number of the data you might need to use computer in order to take those data for example 711 they use cashier okay they use cashier of the point of sale system in order to retrieve huge amount of data from several parts of bangkok in each of the departments or in each of the branches and then they send to the centralized system when they send it they they use the system in order to change those data or analyze those data to become information and then the CEO will use that information in order to make decision whether it is go or not go. So in the strategic decision making, you might need to know about the system that you have to use in order to make the decision. So I mute your sound so you can listen. So for the decision making system, there will be three type of the system. First one is transaction processing system. Second one, decision support system and executive information system. So decision making and problem solving ability are now the most sought after thread in up and coming executive. In executive, uh, if you become the CEO, you might need to practice the decision making and problem solving abilities. But as I mentioned, when you make any decision, if you make just decision very easily, that means you need a huge amount of data in order to make that decision. For example, during lunchtime, what do you want to eat? During lunchtime, you may have some kind of decision that what you want to eat based on your preference, based on your uh, maybe the money in your pocket or based on your friend. But if you are something like the CEO who make decision on do you want to buy this product in order
data, the value of those informations. So what is the meaning of the value of the informations? The value of the informations means that that, that information can help can help making decision and try to enhance the company's profitabilities. So most of the part, if you make wrong decision, you lose something. That is the reason why the CEO of the company needs a lot of support and needs a lot of information in order to make their decision. So if you search Google on this person, Sun Wu, Sun Ju, something like that. Uh, he's the one who create the phrase about knowing enemies and knowing himself in order to win all the battles. That means if you know your competitors and also you know your own, you can use that one as an advantage in order to make a lot of profit more than your competitors. For example, you want to open the donut shop. What, I, what you have to do in order to find out the donut shop? Um, I, I would start with my competitors. So what what you have to do with the with the thing called competitors? You want to open the donut shop. What do you have to do first? I would look at how much they are like what they're selling for, uh -huh. and I would look at their uh, price points. Okay, so that means you try to know their competitors, and then you just come back to yourself and then see. What can you do in order to surplus them? Yes. That is the point of this person, the art of war. So in the business, they are also have the same thing. Okay, they are also have the same thing. You have to know the product first and then you have to know the competitor. In order to know that, you might need a lot of data. So as you can see in these pictures, there'll be several parts that you can use in order to make decision. There'll be executive information system, artificial intelligence, data mining, and so on. So this one will gathering and surrounding by you and then try to help you making decisions. Most of the time, are you playing stock? May I ask, are you playing stock, stock market? I've been looking at the stock market, yes. Okay. So what are the basic stuff of the stock market? Um, buy stocks when they go down and then sell stocks when they go up. So that is the perfect, uh, the perfect time frame. But the problem is when is the time, uh, when is the nice time for buying and selling? So how can you make decision? That is the point that we might need a lot of data. Okay. So in this case, the reason for growing of decision-making information system, first thing people need to analyze large amount of information. Even though you try to do something simple, you need a lot of data, but you think that, oh, decision is very easy to make because all the information has been analyze and set, okay, and set as the directive for you already. For example, you love to eat pizza or you love to eat McDonald. Every time that you go out, you go McDonald, you go to pizza. You didn't make any decision, but you just be there because you equipped with a lot of information already and then you summarize it already. So, you have no need to make the decision. But if you have no idea, okay, if you have no idea about uh, what food that you want to eat uh, last night, you might need to think about what kind of food that I want, what location that I will go, what price, what 
and so on and so forth. So that means that you might need to gathering a lot of data. Second one, people must make decision quickly. As I mentioned, if you make decision really late, you might have a problem of some profit or loss. If you're a businessman and then you have to trade in stock market, the time gap of the profit a lot is less than one hour. So you might need to make decision quickly, but how can you make decision quickly? You have to have some information to back up. Third one, people must apply sophisticated analytic techniques that add modeling and forecasting to make good decision. In order to make good decision, why you make good decision? Because the decision that you make, it had been judged by the future. That means even though you try to make decision, there will be only two choices, or, uh, two answers, good or bad. That's the reason why you have to make decision based on a big amount of data in order to eliminate bad decision or try to reduce the number of bad decision as much as possible. And last one, people must protect the corporate asset and organization information. Even though you try to make decision, you have a huge amount of data, you may not be able to use that for your own purpose outside of the, of the company. But most of the time, Frankly speak, this number four is based on your personal uh, personal ethics. So by the way, in order to make or in order to make decision, you might need one, two, three, and a little bit of four. So as you can see in this picture, there will be level of the system. Okay, there'll be level of the system. Executive, manager, and analysis. <clears throat> For executive means the CEO. Manager also in the part of the CEO, if you talk about the small business, if it is about a big business, there'll be more and more <clears throat> level for you to consider. But if it is the startup company, if you think about the small business or startup company, everything will combine into one. Okay, everything will combine into one. So the level will be for the big company. But if it is for the small company, you may see why those things all combine those things based on your preference. So for the first level transaction processing system, so the system for the daily operational, most of the transaction information or transaction processing system will based on daily input. So for the 7-Eleven, the daily input is the cashier. So the cashier will scan and then retrie retrieve the data and then print out the receipt. All those data will be kept in the system. And then they just transfer this data to the server. So this is the transaction processing system. Most of the time you will see the word POS, okay, the POS. POS stands for point of sales. Point of sale. Yeah, sorry. So the point of sale is the point that you try to sell the product. Even though they have no such thing as this machine. Okay, some sometimes there'll be no such thing as this machine. There'll be just the iPad. And then the payment, they will have another machine for the credit cards. So that means they can do the business. And most of the time when the, when the data comes to their hands, it will be something like a table or the database. All the data will be in the records. And then you might need to analyze those in order to find out some other things. Next one, decision support system. Okay, for the second one is decision support system. The system that helps business in order to make decision, but the system didn't make any decision for you. The decision has been made by the person who used it. Okay, for the decision support system, they support. They will give you several answers, but they will not give you the exact 
number. Model information to support manager and business prof, uh, professional during the decision making process. So for this, you will not see a lot. Okay, you will not see a lot in the real life situation because the decision support system, they will make it as graph and chart. They will make it as graph and chart because the graph and chart will help the manager in order to make decision faster or even they try to recalculate. Okay, recalculate. In Excel, there'll be function called what if analysis. They help the user in order to calculate bags. For example, uh, you have one bag of rice and then you have this price. The sales, sale price is something and then you can input the sale price in order to find out the number of the sales that you need. So that's something like that function. But most of the function in support and in decision support system will help you make decision. Most of the time you will see graph and chart individually in each number. So in this chart, the transaction processing system will gathering the data and send to decision support system in order to gathering and analyze and then make a report. So in this case, the report might include every single thing based on department or based on the topics that uh, the manager or the CEO would like to see. If there is no system, if there is no system, the manager need to analyze, uh, if to make a graph and chart and then make a report in each and every department, which is taking time, okay, which is taking time. And then executive information system, they consolidate, they try to make it as possible, as informative as possible. They make it as a lot of information or a lot of data concluded and ready for the executive to see. So most of the time when you see decision support system and executive information system, they are nearly, nearly the same. Okay, they are nearly the same because they combine the decision support system with the executive because most of the decision that you need to make, the executive need to make. So most of the time when you saw a lot of graph and chart in decision support system, it will be inside executive information system. But why they separate it? Okay, why they separate into three layers? Because in organization, in big organization, executive and manager, they are separate. But right now, okay, but right now, the transaction and manager will be combined into one. And then the manager will work for executive. The executive will make decision. So in that case, the decision support system and executive information system will be used by executive. Sometime the manager will use decision support system or just a brief information in between in order to make the decision at the position of the work. For example, if you are the supervisor or the manager of the restaurant, you might need to make decision at that moment, at that time. But what are your information, your experience, or your basic information based on the computers that input into the system? So you might need to find the data in order to make those. For executive information system, most of the time, okay, most of the time, the executive may not have time that much in order to look at the detail of the data. They want something solid and complete. So they create something called dashboard. Dashboard. So the meaning of dashboard is the gathering of graph and chart or information, which is very, very concluded into one particular topic. Integrate information from multiple components and tailor 
the information to individual preference. That is the meaning of the dashboard. For the digital dashboard, that means it is online. Okay, it is online. The digital dashboard is the analyze of the data, but try to focus on one direction of the information only. For example, on the right hand side, there'll be the cars. If you drive car, you will know all those informations. I'm not driving car, so I may not know some of those information. But when I look at these right, right hand side pictures, I, I saw some scale of the speed. I saw some scale of the fuel. And also I saw some scale of some kind of the engine inside. Even though I'm not the one who drive, I know some basic information. But for those who knows how to drive, they may know a lot more than me. That means this one, this picture, the console of the the cars will summarize only about the car, not all other things. But if you drive something like Tesla, Tesla motors, everything is there, but you have to choose. Because they try to combine the normal analog into digital. So when they combine the analog to digital, that means they're gathering the data and then put into the digital format. And as you can see, in digital format, they can squeeze all the information into small pieces and make it as graph and sharp easily, make it easier for you to understand the total view of the company. So the digital dashboard will be part of the business when you want to see the overall information. And then you can raise the problem and then make decision as far as possible. For example, on the left hand side, if this one is revenue, they might ask what are these coming from? So the manager or something like the department manager might need to elaborate this information by opening another dashboard in order to show just the revenue. Because this one is the executive to see all those informations. Okay, that is about the dashboard. And then when you want to do the dashboard, you might need to gathering part of the information. You might need to understand what are the information that is need and which one is not need. For example, you are the CEO of the university. You are the, at uh, how do you call it? Uh, rector of the university. What are the information that you need in order to put into the dashboard? If you are the rector of the university, what kind of information that you need to put into this dashboard? What does the rector do again? For example, you are the rector of the university and then you want to see the dashboard of this university. What data or what information that you need to put into this dashboard? I suppose I would want um, for a student to find from a specific country. Mm -hmm. So that means you might need to have the map of the student joining the university. What else? Uh, the ratio of business to international relations students. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe something like the revenue expense, something like that. Profit. Number of countries that they come, department, teachers, something like that. Yep. But if you are in the department of accounting, if you are in accountant, if you are the finance department in the university, which part that you do not want to appear on your digital dashboard?
So for example, if you are an accountant, you deal with numbers about profit and loss. Okay, it's about revenue and expense. So that means it's about profit and loss. So you might not need to see the number of t-shirt. No need. But you might know the number of electricity used because it is about the expense. So the accountant will know that, okay, you have to cut down this thing, you have to increase those things. It's about money. If you are in department of uh, sales, you might need to know more about the nationality, the link or interna international relations. But the profit and loss, you just cut it out because it is not about the accountant. So the digital dashboard is will be used in different perspective, in different way. For example, in this case, the car console. If I change the car console to be motorcycle console, this is the car, the black one is the car. If I change to be motorcycle, which one that you take it out? So this one is for the car. The car has the speed. This one is the round per minute. So which one that you want to cut it out for the motorcycle? The motorcycle may need only this. So they cut this. The fuel still there. The heat still there, but change the style. Speed, maybe. The, the car sign, no need, take it out. Something like that. So they just shrink down all the information to be exactly for the motorcycle. So in dashboard or digital dashboard, they try to tailor make the information in order to show the screen to the executive, the overall information. So the dashboard include more than 300 measure of business performance that fall into one of three categories. First one, market pulse. That means all the daily information, daily sales, market shares, and all around. Second one, customer service. And the third one is cost driven across uh, the cost driver. For the customer service, that means all the information include problem solving, include first call, call center, wasting time, but it depends on what it depends on the business. Okay, it depends on the business. Cost driven is about the cost, price, profit loss, something like that. So most of the time they fall into three categories, but if you want to make it exactly like what they want, you might need to understand what kind of the information that the position that needs. For the CEO, they might not need something like the daily, the daily sale number. They just want the overall monthly, monthly sales. But you have to do something called drill down. drill down. Drill down information. What is the meaning of drill down information? The data is there. When you double click, it will show the detail of the information. That is called drill down. Yep. So that means in order to make the dashboard, you might need to prepare a lot of data. Next, AI. Artificial intelligence. So in order to make those dashboard, you might need to use the AI. Or in order to analyze the data, you might need to use the AI or the big data in order to find out the reason in unreason. If you have a lot of data and then you analyze by your own, it's possible. 
But when you have a huge amount of data, you may not be able to analyze by yourself. You might need to create something like automatic or automation system in order to help you analyze the data of what you want. That is the use of the AI. So the AI or artificial intelligence is a stimulated human intellect okay, that has the ability to reason and learn. That means if you give them the chance of the AI, they will learn and do whatever you want them to do. There will be three types of the system that nearly call as artificial intelligence. First one, the expert system. Second one, neural network. And the last one, fuzzy logic. For the expert system, Expert system is the advisory program. They have a lot of data, a lot of data, or in other words, database, in order to give the solution to you. For example, you call to the call center, some call center didn't have this, the human in order to answer your questions. They may hide, before they have the system, they may hide something like, 20 to 30 people to receive your call. But right now they use computers in order to answer your questions based on the database that they have. So they reduce the number of the people. That is also called the expert system. Second one, the neural network. The neural network is one kind of the AI that mimic the brain of the human in order to do something very easy for them that is making decision and the last one the fuzzy logic the fuzzy logic is something like the mathematical method in order to calculate nearly plus and nearly minus nearly good and nearly bad that is the way the artificial intelligence will involve so for the expert system the user try to uh, query or ask for the advice, the system will give them the advice. But the expert at the back need to in, input the knowledge. Okay, the expert will input the knowledge into the knowledge base. After that, you will ask the, uh, they will ask for the advice into that particular system. Most of, most of the time is the, for the doctor that asks for the advice or something like the user try to ask for the, uh, the information. That is called expert system. Call center will become an expert system soon because the call center didn't use human to back up the data. But call center need people to stand by for the user to redirect the expert system to the, to the human in order to talk. For fuzzy, or fuzzy logic, as I mentioned earlier, the fuzzy logic means they are nearly yes or nearly no. Because in human, there will be no such thing as yes and no. Oh no, in computers, they have the yes and no. But in human, there will be nearly yes and nearly no. So the fuzzy logic will try to mimic those gaps, try to uh, try to create the gap of nearly yes and nearly no. So if you have the air conditioner with the fuzzy logic and non-fuzzy logic, the difference between the non-fuzzy logic means I order the air conditioner to be 25 degrees Celsius, it will go to 25 degrees, no more, no less. But if you have fuzzy logic, you can increase the temperature or you decrease the temperature based on your feeling. But sometimes they have the camera in order to track your heat signature and try to increase, uh, decrease the number, uh, the decrease the temperature or increase the temperature based on your preference. For the neural network, this one is another part of artificial intelligence because they can think by themselves they can learn by themselves, okay? How can they learn? When you want to play game, okay? When you want to play games. 
how can you play a game for example mario how how do you know how to play mario how to play games so you take the console you try to mess up with the console controller or just point to any button that they have and then some character moving so you remember that you have to press this button in order to make the character moving the neural network will work the same thing they will let the system run and then try uh, trial and error until they solve the problems that is the neural network yep. so this tree is the example of the artificial intelligence but there will be more for the artificial intelligence there will be more and more face detection also ai the thing that you have to relate with the database huge amount of database searching just search search for the database query you can use the ai to help you chatbot do you know chatbot the chatbot is the robot that they talk to you even though they don't know you at all, but they try to retrieve the data from your from your talking or from your conversation. So if we can use chatbot, we can reduce the number of the uh, the number of the people in your business, and then it will lower your expense. What will happen? You get more profit. No need to wait for person to chat let the computer do the work you have to pay for the it instead so you hide the it in order to taking care of all those system instead of the person who deal with the customer but frankly speak the work that the ai cannot do is the work that the people can do for example the service some service needs people some service need something like the care of the human. There will be the questions, there will be some kind of the question that has some curiosity answer. We have the self-driving car, right? We have the self-driving car. We have the self-flying autopilot airplane. Can you trust that? the airplane what about a car car is a bit of a, a difficult uh, answer because uh, then there's also the question of ethics that goes into programming a self-driving car mm -hmm. um, because uh, if, if the passenger, because your passenger, um, the self-driving car is made for the passenger. If you, if you spent a lot of money for that car, then, well, of course you want your car to protect you, but what if your car is driving 60 miles per hour down the road and there is an old man on the road and you're asleep? Does your car prioritize your life? and run over the old man what if there's not enough time to stop so i mean i i think there was a an instance with google where they they clarified that it's better to prioritize the driver uh -huh. because the driver in the self-driving car is a customer of the company that sold the car they're a client so obviously if it's safer to run over the old man the car has to run over the old man in order to uh, safely secure the client's uh life so i mean there's a lot that goes into whether or not you can trust an automated vehicle mm -hmm. um, there's too many variables um, too many acts of chaos that can say the self-driving car is 100 because a person will 
know to slow down at a certain intersection because they will see the stop sign or mm -hmm. they'll see the speed limit car may not necessarily have that kind of data when going down highway or a road uh -huh. uh, so this one is the work for the neural network that means they need to have a lot of accident in order for the self driving car to be more careful So if in that case, if the self-driving car has been developed until they can drive the same as human driving, driving with cautions, with every single thing, very good in driving, like something like a chauffeur, but no person, do you want to ride that car? I think a self-driving car has to have the same capabilities as a person, um, the, the same self-driving car needs to have the same ability to perceive data like a person. Uh -huh. So it has to be able to recognize stop signs. Yes. It has to be right, actually, to... actually, right now, they can do that. They can see the object in front of them in the speed of 100 uh, to, to 300 uh, meters before and then they analyze what are those objects and then they just slow down or do whatever they can do that do you want to ride that car i don't know i think personally i prefer to have person behind the wheel mm -hmm. because there's also the issue of what if the sensor is broken uh -huh. from a bird flying into it or what if someone short circuits it by accident or okay. someone hacks into your car yes that is the point of the the technologies that the ai cannot reach the thing that is or something like zero time or zero second or immediate attention. AI may not be able to do that because they cannot react as human. But if they can do that, it's going to be fun. Okay, for the this tree, okay, for this tree, you can to the YouTube, I send you, uh, if you go to the link, you can click on the link and it will show how it works, the machine learning, Google Assistant, and then the, the intelligent agent. So you can watch YouTube and then you may understand more about the machine learning, a little bit about machine learning. Next one is about the data mining. Okay. We gathering the data already. We equip. We have a lot of data from so many sources of the place. But you might need to carry out. You need to take it out. So the way to take it out is called the data mining. The data mining means the practice of examining large data in order to generate new information. A few of the more Common form of data mining analysis capability, including cluster analysis, association detection, and statistical analysis. That means you have huge amount of data, but you might need to know the way to retrieve it. When you retrieve it, that means you are data mining. Okay, so most of the business try to do data mining in order to find out what kind of the preference of the customer. Google's, Facebook, they're gathering a lot of data and then they come up with the idea of selling more products. That is called data mining. In the enterprise system, okay, in the enterprise system, instead they try to gathering all the data into centralized server. Okay, gathering data into centralized servers. 
they don't want to use just an Excel to do all the works because Excel is another type of software, but they will use their own system. For example, Oracle, SAP, or something like Microsoft Dynamics in order to gathering the data. The enterprise system will include every section of the software. Okay, so every section of the software. It is very large scale of the system and they include marketing section. Okay, marketing section, CRM section, and then ERP section. What are those things? ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, you plan the resources. CRM, Customer Relationship Management, you take care of the customer. And the marketing, something like the marketing uh, campaign uh, to do the document work and so on. The enterprise system will have a lot of modules, a lot of de uh, departments, and those systems will try to give every single department the software which has the same interface same pictures in each of the department <clears throat> they will use the same system when they input the data they will input into the same database because the enterprise need to gathering the data as much as possible into one centralized data they need that because they need to do the concept of data mining when they're gathering the data, they might need to analyze to whom? To the CEO. For example, in ERP, there'll be a lot of resource, resources that you need to uh, pinpoint to the project. If this project is not profitable, they just cut off, but how to make it, how to make decision of cutting off the project. They might need the data in order to make decision that, okay, this one has a lot of loss. What are the loss? How can they retrieve the resources to another department? That is the way the enterprise, uh, the enterprise system works. They link every single thing into one centralized data. Most of the company that very, very famous is Oracle and SAP. And there'll be another thing called Microsoft Dynamics. Those three, the price of the core program, the core program is not expensive because the core program, it will include the server, the database. But the most expensive part is the module that attached to the core. For example, accounting, HR, finance, and so on. If you are a big company that you can afford Oracle or SAP, that means you have a lot of departments and then all the data will be centralized. Okay, that is the enterprise system. Supply chain management system. If you are the company that have a lot of flow in the supply, you need to buy the supply from the supplier, you want to sell the product to the consumer. The supply chain management system will take place. How can it take place? They will gathering all the data from the beginning of the product until the product has been sold. Okay, that is called the supply chain management system. The system that control all those information from the farm the manufacturer to the storage to the retailer to the consumer the supply chain management system will track all the information from each of the point that is for the system frankly speak in thailand most of the time in thailand the farm they don't use that much because it is very hard to implement, but some farm, they use it. Most of the farm that use supply chain management system is about the livestock. Cows, chickens, they can brand it, they can name it, or they can tag it. For the vegetable, 
right now they try to do it for the vegetable and fruit if you can track back the data for example you brought you buy some mangoes you can track back from the mangoes which farm that they use which manufacturer that they take it from the farm and so on right now we can track only the farm but we cannot track down along with so the supply chain management system involved in management of the information flow between and among the state in supply chain in maximum total supply chain effectiveness and profitabilities. The tracking system or the match management system include the tracking. They track every single thing. Manage all resource required to meet the customer demand, partner, delivery, and so on. So that means the supply chain management system is another system included into the enterprise system but it will be depend on what it will be depend on the business so if the business is not about the supply chain they might minimize this function and not using it it depends on the business point of view that is the flow not include only the product include all the paperwork also Next one, customer relationship management, CRM. This, this one, the customer relationship management, they try to gathering the customer information, try to increase the customer loyalty or the retention. Why, did, why, the, customer, why the business need the customer to buy the product from you again and again? Because they want to earn more and more profit and easy for them to maintain the old customer to uh, to attract uh, to find a new customer is harder than retain it so the crm occur most of the business they try to use crm in order to find out the the customer wants and needs okay for the basic stuff if you go to the is to go to the hospital the CIM of the hospital might need you to fill out the form. If you go to the hospital for the first time, you might need to, to fill in a lot of form. But if you just go the second time, third time, fourth time, you just, you just give them the name. They know everything about you and also all the illness that you have. But it depends on what? It depends on the business point of view. So the CRM involved in managing all aspects of customer relation with an organization to increase customer loyalty and retain an organization profitability as it say profitabilities. Why we keep the customer information in order to earn profit? Why top supermarket wants you to do the sales checkout? Why they need to they need you to tell them the uh, the phone number in order to buy some product because they know where if they know more about you they can do more sales to you that is the CIM works and also the CIM will create something called the customized product the customized product means the product that you need to your test okay that you need to your test for example the shoes you can decide your own shoes choose your own colors do whatever with your shoes and also other products also the same thing they try to do they try to let you customize but when they when you customize it when you buy it they keep those data in order to analyze to another person if they have the same design as you did for example you decide as these pictures and then sum of 200 to 300 something like 400 people also decide the same as this one there will be a chance that the company will redesign a little bit and then resale as a standard design from the company that is the way the customer relationship management works so the next one is about the business progress re-engineering in order to analyze in order to make it better the business need to 
re-engineer the progress. Why we need to re-engineer the progress? Some progress is too long. At this time, if you want to buy some product and then you have to wait for not more than four days, you think it's long, very long time. So if you want to send something, send some email or send some letters, before that there is the letter, right now it's an email. So the email, when you send, you might need to wait for one hour to two hours and wait for the receiver to reply. But they think that it is a waste of time. So they re-engineer and then they try to recreate the system that can do the instant message. So when they do instant message, no need for email. As you can see, they try to re-engineer the progress, the old progress, to be the new one, which is faster, which is more accurate. So in this case, the seven principle of the business process re-engineer. That is the principle, seven principle you might need to follow. First one, organize, organize around outcome, not the task. So they think about the outcome. If the outcome is good, do it. If the outcome is not good, don't do it. The task, that means the progress. If the progress is longer, but the outcome is better, they will do it. That is to re-engineer, to change into the way that the business can work faster or better, and so on. For the seven things, so you can read by yourself, but by the way, in summarize, if you re-engineer, it will make it First one, faster, okay? First one is faster. Second one is more accurate or precise into detail. Fast and accurate, okay? For example, this is the car insurance, the claim resolution progress. In order to claim the Car uh, accident, you might need to send to the agent. The agent will do all the document work. The document work you can send, pass through, and then so on. Right now, call them, they come. So they cut down all the cycle to be 30 minutes. In Thailand, okay, in Thailand. Before that, you have to wait for one hour for the agency or the, the, the representative come to the location and take a photos. Right now, they have the sub representative. You have, you might need to call them and wait for ten to twenty minutes. Take a photo and then done. No need to do other things. That is, they re-engineer the progress to be faster. In uh, Thailand post office, before that, you need to write down a lot of information and then you have to stamp, put a stamp. No need right now. You just go to the post office, pay them. They do all the printing stuff, typing every single thing. So faster than before. Okay. That is the way of re-engineer process, business process re-engineer. Enterprise resource planning. As it is an enterprise, there will be a lot of departments. How can you use all the resource in each of the departments? You might need to use the system enterprise resource system in order in order that you will not miss any point that you might need to plan in order to start a project so for example if the project is about setting up the new uh, the new department store you might need to focus on every single thing inside your company and then try to focus on which part that you have to focus, which part that you have to pay, number of time, number of resources that you might need. So the enterprise resource planning is integrated all department and function through our organization in, in a single IT system. That means if you are sitting in your office and using the ERP system, you will know where, uh, how many days the finance will do the document how many days that the sale can reach to the customer. 
How many days that you can do the e-commerce website and so on. By using the ERP, you can do the planning more accurate. For the enterprise resource, planning is for plan, is for the plan. If you can plan, you might need a lot of data. In this case, for this example, the project is to do the address book website. The plan is to create so on and so forth in which day and all the way through. So the enterprise resource planning, it will help you plan in order to do the business in detail. For example, in this case, generate view, where to go for the generate view, who will taking care of that. If you have this enterprise resource planning, you just click the thing that you want and then drag and drop. So it will be easier for you to do the planning. The enterprise resource planning will help you plan. But for the real situation, you might need to take care or control, take control of the, the, the person in that particular department. Some of the project, you may use one person in that particular department. Or some project, you may have to use the whole department. It depends on the planning that you have made. So in the system, okay, in the big system, they will include all of this based on what based on the customer's requirement of that particular system. As I mentioned, the Oracle, the SAP, or the Microsoft Dynamics is the core software. The rest, it will be the module. That means if you open as the financials, uh, financial consultant, you may have the accounting the, uh, module installed into the core system. If you are an HR, you might need to install this core system into uh, this module into the core system and so on. If you are working as the school, you might need something like the classroom classroom system and install in here. Training system, something like that. So in each of the point in the enterprise system will be the modules of each and every single requirement of that particular business. If the business doesn't use, they may have to do something like old fashioned way. That means you need to, they need to ask the report of each and every person or each and every department when you want to start a new project. So any questions? Uh, no questions. No questions, so I have one. So for the re-engineering, for the re-engineering, business process re-engineering, could you give me some example of the pro business progress re-engineering? Could you give some example in Webster? Oh, I had one for Amazon. Uh, yeah, yes, please. Amazon, let's say they wanted to ship a thousand packages in a single day. Mm -hmm. uh, packages that weighed less than one kilo. Mm -hmm. To do that, they would see operations in the warehouses and mm -hmm. they would see what is inefficient so what Amazon has done um, that I think a lot of warehouses have done or are starting to do is that they've automated the they've cataloged the products on each shelf and they've automated the collection process so instead of using people and forklifts which can be dangerous and sometimes inaccurate. Uh, they use automated forklifts to retrieve the packages and then load them onto the buses. Mm -hmm. So they want so um, they wanted to be able to have that same day delivery as well as <clears throat> maximize uh, shipments in a single day. Mm -hmm. Through 
automating that storage and transfer process, they've made the process more efficient. Okay. So that is the very uh, re-engineer to, to the system because they try to, how do you call They try to minimize the time, make it faster. Yes. And then they try to re-engineer the human not to do the, that thing, use the AI in order to do that. Yes. Okay. For another example that I would like to give to you, that is the, I think the news of the rocket launch, the, the, the star, the Starlink, the Starlink from the Tesla. Yeah. They use the Falcon, the rocket. And then most of the time when they, when they shoot the rocket into the space, they just kick the rocket out and then waste of the money. So they re-engineer by reusing it. So that is the way they re-engineer the process instead of using, uh, thinking the rocket as the waste, they just use it as a recycling. So this is also the progress, is also the re-engineer of the progress. So they change the way they use it in order to make it fast, cheap, and also a lot of profit. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you have any other questions? Uh, no. Okay, so that's all for today and see you on Tuesday, nine o'clock and Thursday, one o'clock, right? Okay, so thank you for today again.